Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian National Mathematical Olympiad for 10th graders 2022 problem number 4. Let x be a set with n elements where n is any natural number from 0 onwards. We wish to find the number of mappings f from the power set of x into itself such that the cardinality of f of a intersected with f of b equals the cardinality of a intersected with b for all elements a and b which are subsets of x. So it's a nice problem, here are my hints. First, make use of the fact that uh, the cardinality of a intersected with b equals the cardinality of a plus the cardinality of b minus the cardinality of a union b, also known as the inclusion-exclusion principle. Then, let a b equal b and show that the cardinality of a equals the cardinality of b and show that f of singleton a equals f of singleton b if and only if a equals b for any elements a and b uh, which are elements of our family, of our set x. Then, show that our function is increasing in, of course, inclusion sense. So, if a is a subset of b, then f of a is a subset of f of b. And from there, deduce that f of a can be atomized, in a sense. It can be written as a union over all elements a, f of singleton a. And deduce that f of a can be written as an image of set a under some permutation sigma of our set x. So give this problem a try, and I will see you in just a minute. Alright, so I will prove several claims. My first claim, my first claim, claim number one, is that for any subset A of X, the cardinality of F of A equals the cardinality of A. Uh, proof is a trivial proof. Consider consider a equal b in this equation which I mark asterisk, and this closes proof. All right, second claim in more, more much much more interesting. Claim number two, I claim that for any two elements a and b of x, elements this time, uh, f of singleton a equals f of singleton b, this happens if and only if they are equal if and only if a equals b. Proof. Proof is rather simple. First, by claim number one, by claim number one, well, f of a and f of singleton b have one element. One element. So they are either equal or disjoint. And now notice that the cardinality of f of singleton a intersected with f of singleton b, let's use our assumption, is the same as cardinality of singleton a intersected with singleton b. And this is of course either 0 or 1, it has zero elements if our elements are different and it has one element if they are equal uh, which means which already implies that f of a uh, equals f of singleton b if and only if if and only if a equals b. All right.
third claim. My third claim is that for any two elements, for any two sets, A included in B, B included in X, well, if A is a subset of B, then F of A is a subset of F of B, which means that our function, our mapping is monotonic. It's increasing, strictly increasing. I increasing, sorry. <laughs> Proof. Uh, well, let's do it in the following way. Mm -hmm. Let's investigate the cardinality of intersection of f of a and f of b. Well, by our assumption, this is the same as the cardinality of f of a plus the cardinality of f of b minus uh, or maybe, you know what, let's write it like it's this minus, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's write union right here. By inclusion-exclusion principle, it can be written in this way. Yes, it's inclusion-exclusion principle. Uh, we have this first equality, and now by our assumption, well, first of all, by claim number one, the cardinality of f of a is the same as the cardinality of a, plus the cardinality of f of b, and here we can put the cardinality of a intersected with b. So it's cardinality of a plus cardinality of f of b, minus, and what's the cardinality of A intersected with B? Notice that A is a subset of B. So it's, of course, the cardinality of A. So we have just cardinality of F of B. All right, but now uh, let's, let's take a look. Since, of course, since F of B is a subset of F of A, union f of b we must have we must have that f of a is in itself a subset of f of b which closes this claim proof of this claim well why is that we may ask well because think about it if f of a contains something which is not in f of b then this cardinality would be strictly greater than this cardinality, which cannot happen. All right. My fourth claim is that for any subset A, which is a subset of X, F of A can be written as union over all elements A, F of singleton A. Proof. Proof. By claim number, by my previous claim, by claim number three, well, F of A, which is F of union, union over all elements A, singleton A, well, in this, my union is included, which happens on the right-hand side. Well, why is that? Because our mapping is monotonic. It was exactly claim number three. So we can, f of one element is included in this whole sum and so on. But, moreover, moreover, well, notice that by claim number two, by claim number two, we can write something more. Let's compare the cardinalities. What's the cardinality of f of a? The cardinality of f of a is the cardinality of f union. 
singletons. And now let's notice that, or maybe you know what, let's write it in a different way. Notice that uh, for any a and b, which are in a, f of singleton a is not is not equal to f singleton b, provided they, that they are not equal. So, so the cardinality of union f of singleton a, well, we have as many elements as elements of a. As elements of a. Uh, but this, by claim number one, is the cardinality of f of a. So let's compare it. We know that this is a subset of f of a, and they have the same cardinality, which means, so it must mean that f of a can be atomized, can be written in this way. And we have equality, which closes the proof of this claim. All right, and now, we can deduce, we have corollary, corollary, uh, that f of a can be written as sigma of a, where, where, uh, f of singleton a equals sigma of a, and of course, sigma goes from x to x. Moreover, this sigma, sigma is a permutation. Of x. Well, why is that, you may ask? Well, first of all, permutation means that it is a bijection. Well, it is injective because we have showed that uh, this f of singleton a for two different elements, a and b, different elements, we have different values of this function right here. So sigma is injective. But moreover, x is a finite set. Every injection is a bijection when dealing with functions from a finite set into itself. So it's really a permutation. Conversely, 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 or maybe let's write it, maybe like that, um, maybe let's write it in a different way. Uh, now let's go in the other direction. So now suppose that sigma goes from x into x, is a permutation. It's a permutation. Uh, it's a permutation. Now let f of a be equal to sigma of a. Image. I write it in brackets because it's image. It's not value of our at some argument, but it's image. Sigma image of A under mapping sigma or any or any A which is a subset of X. A claim that it satisfies this condition asterisk. Uh, because now let's take a look. Let A and B be subsets of X. Then, then we have the following. Cardinality of f of a, a cardinality of f of a intersected with f of b. Well, it's the cardinality of image sigma of a intersected with sigma of b. All right. Now, since our function is bijective, 
this is the same is a well-known property from set theory that it is uh, sigma of a intersected with sigma of b is the same as sigma of a intersected with b and now it's a permutation so it preserves the cardinalities so it's the same as a intersected with b which means that ie our condition asterisk is satisfied so in fact now we know our solution set solutions solutions are characterized by these permutations so solutions f of a equals sigma of a where sigma is any per permutation any permutation and our question was, what's the number of such mappings F? Well, the number of them is exactly the number of permutations. So the number of solutions. What's the number of solutions? Well, it's the cardinality of X factorial, in our, in our case, i.e. n factorial n factorial in our case and this closes our problem so very nice problem from combinatorics and uh, functional equations and set theory very nice problem thank you very much for watching i hope that you've learned something new this time and i will see you next time goodbye